Happy Friday, y'all. Welcome back to Weld.com. So today, we're going to cover three different types of discontinuities. Uh, continue is the third part of the series for shield and metal arc welding. We're going to go ahead and get some plates cut up, and we're going to talk about incomplete fusion, slag inclusion, and hopefully be able to get some overlap in there. Hopefully, we'll be able to replicate that for you. So let's go ahead and get some plates prepped, and we'll get to it. And now we weld. Sam the cooking guy, if you're watching this, we really, we like watching your show. Keep it up, congratulations on a million. It's a big deal. All right, so we're gonna start right here on the run-in tab. So even though we're trying to reproduce weld discontinuities, we're still gonna utilize our run-on tab like we're supposed to, because we're trying to build good habits. As we work our way into the joint here, we're gonna go side to side, pausing equally, or just holding for a split second on each side. Just kind of watching that puddle flow in and tie over the edge of that plate, right? Trying to tie all three of these pieces together. We'll just keep progressing along like this. This is what this is what the weld should look like. This is what you should be seeing underneath your hood. I'll shut up for a second so you can hear what it sounds like. Now as we get up closer towards the middle here, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to favor the left hand side of this plate and hopefully we'll be able to get both slag inclusion and incomplete fusion on this plate so I can show you guys exactly what that looks like and how to avoid it. All right, so as a right-handed person, if I'm holding my electrode, my electrode holder, the rod's gonna come across naturally at an angle favoring the left-hand side. That's the way that I'm pointing. Now I can manipulate the rod in there and point it straight but eventually you're just gonna kinda go back and your hand's gonna go back to you know muscle memory and it's gonna go back to that little kicked off angle. So what you can actually do is if you kick your foot in, just take a half step forward with your non-dominant leg or a half step back with your dominant leg, it squares that rod in your body up with your intended target. Kinda like if you've ever shot a rifle or a shotgun, you square your shoulder up to the target. Square your shoulder up, your wrist, elbow, everything. Keep that in line with that joint, keep it straight in there. You don't wanna be canted off one way or the other and then have to naturally fight because subconsciously you're gonna start favoring that left hand again or that left side again, especially if you're new. Once, uh, once you've been welding for a while, you developed your muscle memory, you know, you're not gonna have any issues. But for those of you that, that are just starting off, try that, I guarantee it's gonna help you. Now when I do this restart, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna favor that left hand side and hopefully we'll be able to produce some incomplete fusion there as well. Okay, now we're going back side to side, making sure we're doing it correctly, holding the sides, keeping everything equal, going fast to the center because it's vertical. Center's gonna take care of itself. We're gonna migrate our way up here to the uh, upper portion of the plate. Once again, favor this left-hand side because I'm right-handed. We'll be able to get some, uh, get some incomplete fusion in there as well for you. And then as we go ahead and tail out, we're gonna go ahead and utilize this runoff tab. Once again, just to build good habits. All right, so looks like we got what we we're looking for. I do have incomplete fusion right here as well as some slag inclusion, so that's both good. Uh, just for this demonstration, it is not good when you're doing a qualification test or even practice. Same thing right here on the, uh, the restart, we favored that left-hand side. I've got a little bit of uh, lack of fusion right there. Not too bad, I could probably work with that on the next pass, not a big deal. And then we got some more up here. So if I, this slag inclusion right here, if I scrape all that out, um, I can almost guarantee I'll be able to see that backing strip here. That's what I don't want to see. I don't want to be able to see the backing strip through the weld that I just put in on that plate. That's typically an automatic fail. The slag inclusion, I would take time, uh, if there's a qualification test, if you're allowed to use power tools, a little cutoff wheel in there to kind of open that up and get that stuff out, it's a good idea. If not, um, you can use dental picks. I also recommend if you don't have dental picks, you can take a, a welding stub and just sharpen the end and then you can get up in there and pick that stuff out. So most people are gonna tell you, you know, I've been doing this for 20 years and if you turn your machine up, well, you just gotta crank it up five, 10 amps, you'll burn all that crap out of there. Not usually. What you're gonna do is you're gonna cover that up, right? That crap's still gonna be there. 
uh, but because you put a weld pass over it, you just can't see it anymore. So it looks like it burnt up and you know they just chip it out and all that. But you, they trap slag in there. That's why when they do an x-ray on here, a radiograph testing, they'll say, well, you've, you've got slag inclusions in there. And you'd be like, well, how's that be? I, I, I burnt it out. No, you covered it up because it's, you're not, you get to dig this stuff out, clean it out, right? Especially if you guys out there doing uh, flux core, uh, that stuff, you know, depending on your contact tip to work distance, uh, different parameters, uh, travel speeds, work angles, you'll, you'll get the same situation developed in there. You'll get slag inclusions in there. Uh, go ahead, take the time to pick that stuff out. If you have a grinder, use that to your advantage. Grind that little area back out, fill it back in. That shouldn't be a problem as long as you get good tie-ins. And then you can go ahead and, and run your fills and your caps uh, and all that. So let's go ahead, we'll, we'll just fill this in real quick. I'll probably just lay it flat just to fill it in. And then maybe we'll throw it in the horizontal position and hopefully get some overlap for you guys. All right, so essentially I'm just gonna exaggerate my work angle and point downwards just a little bit to try and get that overlap to uh, occur. Overlap essentially occurs when it doesn't tie into the previous weld very well or the parent metal or the base metal. It kind of has a beer belly effect, like the gut hanging out over the, the uh, the waistline of the pants there, the trousers for you folks across the uh, pond. But it, it just kind of rolls over and sits on that weld. It just doesn't tie in properly. So to avoid getting overlap on there, uh, in the especially in the horizontal position, you want to point 10 to 15 degrees up with your work angle. That's going to keep that weld pushed up against the, the top layers. Also welding bottom to top, that's going to help prevent it. It's going to give that weld something to sit on. So always start at the bottom of your uh, the welding area start at the bottom and kind of build your way up like a set of stairs almost and then uh, never weld top down uh, you can almost guarantee to get overlap that way you don't want to weld top down always go bottom up um, maintain a, a nice consistent travel angle if you go mm -hmm. too slow it's going to want to pour out on you a little bit and then hold just a little bit higher on the previous welds toe or the edge of your base metal because that weld's naturally going to sag uh, when you're when you're going along the joint, it's naturally going to sag a little bit, so use that to your advantage. Uh, just watch your travel angles, work angles, and speed. All right. So in an attempt to replicate some overlap, we went ahead and got some excessive reinforcement for you guys. So it's a it's a bonus. You get a bonus in this episode. So that's four discontinuities in this video. Uh, but essentially, what overlap is is when it kind of edge of that weld or the toe of that weld kind of overlaps. Hence the name onto the material, uh, be it the, the base metal or the previous weld, and it just doesn't fuse in. So kind of like a beer gut, you know, just kind of overlaps on that area. It doesn't tie in really well. Uh, it happens in the uh, affiliate weld as well. You can get it in a fillet weld, you can get it in a groove weld. Um, but improper travel angles, uh, slow travel speed, all of those can get you some overlap. Uh, it took every bit of that to get some on here. Uh, we did get a little bit over on this uh, this last edge, not as pronounced as I would like to see it, uh, so we can give you guys a good visual demonstration. But in this area right here, it's pretty prevalent where just the weld just kind of sags over. It doesn't tie in properly to that previous weld or the base metal. All right, so we went ahead and cut it apart. So as you can see, we got lack of fusion and a slag inclusion. So you're not going to burn it out. Now go away before I taunt you a second time. You guys, we really appreciate you watching. Hope you learned something along the way. And until next time, make every well better than your last.